Several years ago, while attending a national scientific conference, I gave what I thought was giving a motivational speech to the PhD students. Kind of motivational means really motivation, right? You go and like tell them how they should work very hard um, day and night in the lab and generate data and be famous and so on. Any PhD student knows the choice of doing a graduate studies is a very difficult one because the intense commitment is very high. They have to have what we call the fire in the belly. Suddenly, from the back of the audience, I hear the question, excuse me, Dr. Sadayapan, tell me now, how do you manage your work-life balance? Wait, what? I was like, I was thinking, what are you talking about? Literally, I had no clue the term work-life meant. Life was work to me. Working non-stop had been ingrained into me from an early age. So the notion of being, balancing this with some kind of life was foreign to me. My parents were farmers. I was raised in a farmland in the middle of somewhere, you know, nowhere. Their life just to survive was constant work. So my father got up in the morning, normally at 5 a.m. to work on the field. Patterning my life after him, I worked before and after school on the farmland. So, it was very easy for me to conclude during my PhD studies that holidays, vacations were not meant for scientists. Totally not. Experiments never wait for the weekends. Most importantly, most of the mentors, they work very hard on the weekends. They never take vacations. Sometimes, believe me or not, the only free time that students and trainees, they have when the mentors attended scientific conferences out of the town. <laughs> so you can go late in the morning and leave early in the evening. So, even more sadly, several labs, they do their compulsory weekly lab meetings on Friday after 5 p.m. or on the weekends too, I have seen it. So the fact is my parents and mentors never taught me or encouraged work-life balance. My ambition also did not question this imbalance. So the question asked at my talk brought this all home to me like a slap in the face. Work-life balance refers different things to different people. Like in Hollywood movies, your spouse comes in the morning with a nice smile, with a bed coffee, you kind of smile and you wake up, read the daily newspaper, eat breakfast as a family, and then go off to work. Then you come back at 6 p.m., have a quality time with your family and kids, watch a TED show, have a drink, and go to bed. Then on the weekends, you have a picnic with friends and family, see a movie, go shopping and dine outside, etc. Now tell me, how many of you have this kind of life in reality? I know, we all wish for. So the fact is that work-life balance for scientists is not uniformly defined by eight hours of work per day, five days a week, or time off on the weekends. Institutions define our work by means of 
percentage of efforts our calendar months not by hours this imbalance is not unique to scientists but also applies to other professionals as well therefore the work life balance is best defined by the individual's concern it's all about effectiveness and efficiency to complete to complete somebody's work therefore the key then become how you define your work and your life expectations as of me little by little i'm learning what it means to have a work life balance for me work life balance means it's a it's a, a, a relative it's it's a between personal and professional experiences in an individual's life it is a state of equilibrium balancing the demands of work and your life so work life imbalance is a most common problem for most of the people in science in particularly in science it has few um, unique features there is a pressure from the institution and peers to have fundings to have high impact paper publications research is also very competitive that require extensive commitment often at the cost of missing family events for example after coming to the united states i was not able to visit my parents in india for 6 years because of my commitment to the research project publications writing grant applications and continuously setting my goals for the next career move also many if not most experiments don't fit into 9 to 5 timeline bench scientists may work 7 days a week in the lab chasing their next discovery for publications grant applications of course for recognition as well it amounts to a marathon not a sprint i and i was one of the participants in this race so poor work life balance number 1 burnout number 2 mental stress depression and health issues are the end result of a poor work life balance it can cause additional stress when you are not even performing very well in terms of other poor work life balance depression right for example um so social addiction and um continuous imbalance in in life so it it really extended to the next level so when we do in research one of the thing the poor poor work life balance can kind of make you improper in the in the experiments as well adding to the stress particularly during post doctoral studies and phd uh, uh, time the fellowships are relatively lower for the amount of, or for the number of hours you work also students and many trainees they have chronic visa issues that obligated them to work for their mentors for long hours with low pay so all i can say is work life balance is 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 really beneficial it can give you happiness improved positiveness and healthiness but the thing is you have to figure out how to achieve best work life balance in terms of scientist a healthier frame of mind in turns allows you to be more focused and make less errors in your experiment ironically the increased 
happiness in your life can lead to greater work productivity even though in the number of hours you worked less overall you are likely to have improved relationship and then increase happiness with your life so the question is how to achieve this work life balance i would like to start with the institutional level institutions across the country whether private or public should have a standard work life policies and practices institutions must follow through their employees utilize their paid time of vacations properly work life balance trainings with coaches should be provided to the employees on regular basis institutions these days now come up with so many on site and off site facilities so institutions should give other supports like options to work from home or remotely or flexible time institutions should provide daycare center healthcare facilities on site or fitness wellness programs these all should be provided uh, to the employees these are really important other examples are, I, i can say institution now these days have come up with expanding maternity leave now added paternity leave national institute of health grant mechanisms allows early career investigator status extending for so many personal and and um natural disaster status so the next change has to come from the institutional leaders level institutional leaders mentors should lead by example taking proper holidays and spending family and quality time away from work group leaders should discuss with their team members about how their work life balance what's their holiday plans are experiences most importantly avoiding last minute rushes you know taking work home or adding more work to the trainees or texting and calling in the late night or on the weekends this all should be strictly avoided now at the personal level find a job that you love and ask for flexibilities this is so important you can practice you should take break from your work invest in relationship prioritize your health and quality time this can start with small steps and taking classes in time management that you know are oriented to a clear understanding of you and your family's need i understand several of you here you work the best under pressure or need incentives this is for you don't be afraid to unplug take a vacation make time for you and your loved ones set goals and priorities set boundaries and timelines most importantly stop checking and answering your emails and messages in the middle of the night and the weekends you know stick to that lastly accept there is no perfect work life balance it is how you define it a healthier happier and fulfilled life can follow you like alcoholics 
workaholics can give you pleasure at the beginning but causes severe health issues at the end so practice how to balance work life you can have increased happiness with a greater work productivity if when you balance work life balance it's important how you manage it so in conclusion it is possible to prevent the fire in the belly from becoming an ulcer in the stomach thank you